What's going on guys? I'm back again with another tool review video. This time we're taking a look at the Aten ST862D. This is a professional class hot air station with a rated heater power of 1000 watts. Aten were kind enough to send this one out for review. However, with all my reviews, this is a honest opinion and this video isn't even seen by the manufacturer before release. Alrighty, let's get on with the video. For this review, I'll be comparing my opinion of the Aten against past experiences using other one kilowatt machines daily in a professional repair shop setting. Just for a bit of backstory, for the last six years or so, I've been using both the legendary Quick 861DW and the Sugon 8620DX. Both of these are one kilowatt hot air stations, much like the Aten, and using them, I've been repairing MacBook, phone, and console logic boards daily as a career, just to put my opinion in perspective. The Aten, much like its competitors, uses a screwless quick change nozzle system and a larger centralized blower located in the station's main unit. This differs from cheaper stations, which use a mini blower style system built into the handpiece. Using a blower inside the main unit, this provides both higher air volume and more finite control over airspeed, which we'll get into more in a little bit. Before we get into the nitty gritty of things, let's first take a look at the front panel user interface of the machine. Much like other stations in this class, you'll find a large inverted display along with digital air and temperature controls. And of course you have three temperature presets, much like the Quick and Sugon. I like the placement of these presets more than the Quick, which would be susceptible to accidental input if the main unit was on a desk. Now moving down, we have the main power switch and adjacent to that we have the fixed air hose. The air hose is pretty standard length at about 70 centimeters and it's made from heat resistant silicon. Thanks to the thicker walled hose used, the minimum center line bend radius is tighter than that of other units at 5 cm, meaning the hose will be less likely to kink in normal use, unlike the Sugon which was prone to kinks quite often from my experience. This is further helped by the use of a longer, more sturdy strain relief on both ends of the hose. Now moving over to the stand, it's constructed out of heavy cast metal and has a built in magnet for the station's auto sleep function. Where the 862 differs from other units is the handpiece has a wake button. This button is used in place of the auto wake feature found on other units. So instead of the machine starting automatically as soon as you remove the handpiece from the cradle, you can choose when the station starts by pressing the button instead. I find this more useful than fully automatic stations as you can more easily hot swap nozzles. You can also program the station standby time from one to 10 minutes. Meaning when you place the handpiece down and then pick it back up again, so long as you are picking it up between the predefined parameters, the station will start heating automatically again without needing to press the button. Looking closer at the hot end now, we can see the station is fitted with a high performance heater core. This honeycomb style heater core differs from the lower end bottle brush style heaters by forcing all of the air through the heater coils rather than around them. This ensures the most thermal energy is transferred when operating. As a result, this means that the station can heat up boards faster and with more accuracy compared to the lower end stations. As with most hot air stations, the 862D comes bundled with a set of nozzles. My unit came with four of them. Two of the larger nozzles are fitted with cyclone mixers, while the other two are a straight through design. This station also came with a nozzle converter. This allows you to use the more common Hako 850 style nozzles on the machine as well which is something I wish other machines came with. Aten also offer a range of other nozzles to purchase after the fact. I chose a 45 degree nozzle, which makes soldering under a microscope much easier. Moving over to the handpiece, it differs from the previous station we reviewed, mostly by the fact there is no blower inside. This provides more room for a bigger heater core. While we are on the subject of blower fans, sadly, the Aten's blower is a little louder than other stations in its class. This is down to the Aten's main unit having a smaller design envelope. In order to accommodate the smaller housing while simultaneously maintaining the same air volume, a higher RPM fan with a smaller blower housing was chosen. As a result, the station is noticeably louder than other stations and has a higher pitched sound. In a quieter workshop, this can be a little annoying. 
However, the blower still functions adequately, allowing airflow from 20 liters per minute all the way up to 130 liters per minute. So it's a good fit for micro soldering and general rework too. Looking closer inside the station, the 862D is fitted with a standard 3-pin IEC C13 socket, which is connected to both the heater core control section and a small transformer for powering the machine's logic. The brains at the heart of this operation is a microcontroller, which oversees all functions of the main unit. Build quality is pretty typical for this price point and is acceptable. As with our previous review, the 862D uses a mains powered heater core. However, unlike the mentioned unit, the Aten doesn't have a removable handpiece, so there's no issues here. Now moving across to some practical tests. Checking the heater ramp and throughput, we can see the heat up time is very fast and throughput appears to be quite even. As mentioned in previous reviews, recording the output temperature like this should be taken with a grain of salt as airspeed, nozzle diameter, and measurement distance can all affect the recorded output temperature. This is just being done to help demonstrate the heater ramp times. Having said that, like all good hot air stations, the 862D has a calibration offset function in its software, if you should need to adjust your unit later on. Also in the software, you can program the previously mentioned sleep timer, as well as a temperature lockout, and also has the option to disable the buzzer. So, what are my final thoughts? The 862D is a great budget alternative in the high power hot air station market and should be seriously considered by any repair shop looking to replace or upgrade their existing station. The ramp times are very good, the heater output and blower are nice and uniform, I just wish the blower fan wasn't so loud and annoying. So there you have it. Leave a comment down below if you have this station or one like it, and let me know what I should review next. Also, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, see ya.